Good news everyone, Biogen version 10 is technically now available. I say technically because it's not really publicly available yet, although I reserve the right to make it public at any time. What I mean is Biogen is our free generative modeling add-on for Blender. It's undergone a lot of changes since its first inception in, I think, 2019? Back when geometry nodes wasn't really a thing in Blender. And it's had all sorts of experimental features over the years. And for version 10, I have really simplified the add-on. So I got rid of a bunch of unnecessary bloat and features that people weren't really using. I've added more comprehensive debugging as well. And we basically redesigned the default effects from scratch. So the principle behind Biogen is that if you're looking at an object that you're working on and you think, I want to modify this in some way in terms of the mesh content, let's say it's like a character body of some kind. You think, okay, well, what do I want to do to the actual surface of this mesh? What do I want to do above the surface? And what do I want to do to the volume of the surface? So what's underneath the surface? And these questions have been represented in these panels here. So volume, mesh, and surface. So the point of Biogen is to act as an artistic wrapper for now geometry nodes effects. In the past, it used to be a combination of modified and geometry nodes, but since a lot of modifiers were turned into nodes for geometry nodes anyway, it just seemed appropriate to keep it simple and stick with geo nodes. So you see that we've got three logic libraries for each of the pillars here. On the surface, we have surface distribution, surface growth, and surface ivy growth. These are different types of growth for making things appear on top of a surface. So for surface distribution, you could instance like any kind of other object, instance whatever is using points by default. Surface growth is a voxel-based growth effect, so you can do any kind of pattern appearing on the surface using voxels, and ivy growth is a curve based effect. When you apply any of these to an object, you'll notice that it comes kind of automatically unpacking a geometry node tree. And there are tons of parameters in here and different options you can plug in and modify. It may also drag in some additional objects because by default, we have the capability for like selection and scaling by proximity and having things only appear within the bounds of a mesh and stuff like that. So you can plug and play and try different things. And we'll probably do more detailed tutorials about individual effects going into the future. But for this video, I figure I'll give you an overview. Under Mesh, the official defaults for this version are Mesh Deconstructor. If I apply that, you can see what happens here. So it's deconstructing the mesh and we're also getting an animated sequence. I realize I didn't show you all the surface ones. I guess we'll all we'll go back to that. We've got Mesh Deformation, very simple. It's exactly what you think it is but people will like a shortcut to having deformation effects. So you can do all kinds of noise. And we tend not to subdivide things much in the geometry nodes trees, because I'm sure you know what it's like. If you've got a complex mesh, you throw a subdivision surface modifier on it, Blender crashes. So when it comes to the default effects in Biogen, we try not to do that too much to your meshes. Sometimes it's required for some effects, but otherwise you may see like loose subsurf type nodes with which have like a parameter of zero or one, and then it's up to you to enhance them. But most of the time you want to to do your subdividing before applying the effects to give the effects a bit more geometry to work with. You know what I mean? So the last one under mesh, oh, this is a fun one. Here's a little tip, by the way, for this one. Icosphere works really well, just given the layout, like the directionality of the geometry. So if you do that and apply the mesh reaction diffusion and then play the timeline, you see what's happening there. So the length of the effect is based on the number of frames in the scene. So say I put that to 5,000, for example, and restart it, then it will allow it to pretty much cover the entire mesh, like by the time it's done. But again, all the parameters are there to play with. And in a lot of these effects, there's some like usability information as well. So you can actually use these as like really good platforms for learning how to modify geometry nodes effects. So that's reaction diffusion. And while I'm here, actually, let me show you a really kind of gross example of using that for an artistic effect beyond something that's just abstract and cool. If I go to D scans, these are available for my silver tier patrons. If I bring in the high poly pumpkin, so this is a relatively high poly pumpkin. And if I apply the reaction diffusion to this and then play, you'll see what's happening there. It's almost like bugs are crawling under the surface. Now we didn't do that intentionally, but it just goes to show, you know, how the same effects in different contexts can mean quite different things. And again, you know, haven't played with any parameters yet. I'm sure there's a lot you'll be able to do with that. Okay, so under volume, again, these are the things happening underneath the surface. And this is where some of my favorite stuff is. So obviously we've got the simple stuff like volume distribution. It's effectively the same thing as the surface distribution, except this time inside of a volume. We've got lots of effects for that. And by the way, they can be animated as well, as you can see. We've got plexus. So plexus is fun. Again, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the plexus effect, but this will give you a demonstration of how to connect things in terms of curves. But my favorite one is volume advection. So this one is fantastic for things like coral type effects. And again, all the parameters can be modified. We've got a simulation and a repeat zone version. What this means is when you play the effect with the simulation mode, they will bake it as you go. With the repeat zone version, it will just give you the output for a particular frame. Let's take a look at what it does. There we go. 
so it grows out from the space you provide and you can do this with any shape object so you can use any object as like a volume growth medium for the infection to occur and then you can apply that you know take it away and do whatever the hell you want with it so let's reset that maybe i'll like change the the noise texture and you'll see that we get a completely different result i downscale the noise maybe i'll, I'll upscale it a lot and then we get like you know really kind of high res high frequency thing going on again what i said about coming with your own geometry before the effect so you're seeing the principle of biogen in action here oh yeah there are a couple of more in the surface we need to take a look at so obviously we looked at surface distribution surface growth again on top of the surface voxel type growth effects modifiable as well and iv type growth so these ones pulsate a little bit as well you can see how that works in the nodes but again we can do more like detailed tutorial content in the future with that all right let's talk debugging you'll notice that under the settings panel here there's an option called debug mode and if we tick that we've got output to log on Windows, we can go to Window Toggle System Console. And because I've had debug mode ticked, you'll see that whenever I've applied an effect, it dumps a whole bunch of information. It would say the Blender version, the Biogen version, what operating system and architecture, the name of the object, the name of the effect, whether the directory for the content pack exists, what kind of directory string it's trying to use to find the content, etc. So the reason for this is because there have been issues in the past that are specific to operating systems, especially Mac, where kind of diagnosing the issue with people People using the add-on is very difficult because it's difficult to get the right information without actually being there to play around with the computer and the back and forth between talking to people is very slow you'll ask a question they won't give all of the answers etc etc depending on the person that is like some people are like right on the money with the information they provide but the issue is just not that obvious so we can output things to the console now in version 10 however not everyone will know how to access the console on linux and mac it's a little bit different i think you have to run blender from the command line actually what i've just done is reset my scene so we can actually get like a whole sequence of actions happening in the log so i'm starting again with output to log ticked and i'll do like volume advection let it play reselect the object mesh deconstructor apply that and with these default values you know we get some really weird stuff happening but again you can play around with that and then on top of that let's do surface distribution so we get all these points on top right the amalgamated biogen mess we can call it laggy but interesting and animatable oh god why am i playing the timeline that's a bad idea while i'm recording <laughs> okay so it should have outputted things to a log where is the log it's in the root directory of the add-on but a shortcut you can use to get there is to open the local content packs via the button then you can go one folder up to biogen so in here we can now see the sequence of actions that were taken we can see that we imported the volume advection the mesh deconstructor and the surface distribution now if the effect fails to import which happened on mac sometimes then i will see important information in this log so if you have issues with the add-on let me know i've made a slight change to how directories were handled in the add-on that should make it more stable on mac i think but i don't know until people start testing it in that i have intentionally left a trailing separator in the directory at the end of the appending sequence because i got a little tip that leaving the separator out might be confusing mac systems not all of them though so we'll see anyway let's talk about content packs so as you may have noticed there is a drop down here for each of these pillars biogen supports the addition of content packs and it has done since a few versions back basically in the root add-on there's a folder called content packs and in here you'll see a folder called official so this is the official content pack minus the charon workspace folder that's my collaborator on biogen that won't be there for you on the documentation the new documentation i've written it explains how to make content packs but it's actually really simple once you know it before i explain that though i will say that the no Node tree effects, all present here that I've shown you, have been marked as assets in the official content pack, which means if you want to use this content without using the Biogen interface, you can take this official content pack folder and use it as an asset library. So you can go to edit, preferences, file paths, make a new asset library and point Blender to that official content pack. But it means that the same thing can happen in reverse. If you are a developer of geometry nodes based asset libraries, say you make node groups for geometry nodes, you can make your packs compatible with the biogen add-on but there is a certain sequence you need to do to make that work firstly all content packs need their own self-contained folder this is quite normal for asset libraries because asset libraries tend to point to folders and then inside of that you can have multiple blend files with different assets marked however in this case content packs should only have one file in them and the file needs to be named identical to the folder that's not too much of a stretch for an asset library you know for example if you've got an asset library with a folder named node tools it makes sense to call the blend file node tools biogen expects this naming power 
clarity. Now you may have a variety of content in there and not everything would be suitable for being elevated to an effect for the interface. For example, with volume advection, we might imagine that, you know, I might have all sorts of other node groups in here to enhance the effect. There aren't that many node groups in this one specifically actually, but there are in the other effects. And it wouldn't really make sense to have every single node group accessible on the add-on. You know, these are only really for the artistic ones, the higher level ones for artistic control. So the way you elevate things for Biogen is through these folders, right? So we've got three folders here, thumbnails, underscore mesh, underscore effects, thumbnail surface effects, and thumbnails volume effects. This is where Biogen looks for the content. It doesn't actually look in the blend file. So if I go into thumbnails surface effects, you'll see there are three image files and these are JPEGs. One is called S surface distribution, surface growth and surface IV growth. And you'll see that they are identical to what we see in the add-on. So this is how Biogen finds content. It looks to see that the content pack exists. It looks for the thumbnail folders for every image in the thumbnail folder, it takes the name. So it's gonna take the name S surface distribution. Once it's got that name, when someone tries to apply the effect, it's gonna take that name and look for it in the content pack. Then it's gonna find the node tree named identically to the image and then take that out. So the Biogen content pack system is all about this naming parity. The asset library folder needs to have the same name as the asset library file. The geometry node effect in the file needs to have the same name as the thumbnail for it. Again, there's more information about this on the documentation, but realistically, that's all you need to do. Just make sure the thumbnail folders are there and make sure there's an image for the node tree. There's lots of opportunity for things to go wrong in that. The most common thing is where people think they've named everything identically, but they absolutely have not. Like if you set your content up fine, if the thumbnails are appearing, but when you go to apply it, it won't import. 99% of the time, there's a naming issue somewhere. It may be another problem. It may be a directory issue, but the naming is the thing that people have trouble with. So you might ask, what does the S mean? in the thumbnails. There's an S at the beginning of every effect. Okay, so this is another requirement. This is a little bit of a more complex requirement. Every effect needs to have a prefix. If you don't know what prefix to use, if you're just using geometry nodes effects, just use S, a capital S. What it means is simple or single. Both apply here. Basically, Biogen supports a few different ways to import content into the user's blend file. There are three versions of standard. There's S, TR, and TS. S means simple or single. TR means target remote and TS means target self. Target remote and target self are different because instead of just importing one geometry nodes tree, which may contain any number of geometry nodes groups inside of it, which Blender automatically brings in. And if there's any collections referenced or objects referenced, it will bring those in automatically. TR and TS are different because they don't just bring in a geometry nodes tree. They bring in an entire template object as a container, which may contain any number of modifiers, geometry nodes, etc. And then depending on whether it's target remote or target self, it will either reassign the entire modifier stack to the object the user had originally selected, or it will keep it separate and use the original object as like a target object input for that stack. It's a little bit complicated to explain without a demonstration, but for now with Biogen version 10, I figured let's just keep it simple. We're going to stick with the simple method, which is why everything is marked with the S prefix. More input methods may be added over time if and when they're needed, but chances are they probably won't be needed because as Geometry Nodes is getting more fleshed out, more comprehensive, it's allowing for more things to happen. You may also notice that another feature has been removed from Biogen, which is the instant weight painting. So with the surface effects, we used to have a feature where you could apply an effect and immediately go into weight painting mode so you can paint the effect on. I've removed that because it was a bit limiting in the way of we would have to think about every single surface effect effect that could happen in terms of whether it could be painted and therefore we may choose not to make really cool effects just because we wouldn't be sure how to adapt it for weight painting. So in a way it was like creatively limiting even though it was easy to paint things on. Also for effects to support weight painting it might not be too difficult just to do that anyway by exposing the weight input and then letting the user do it and also the elements of the API we were using for that would be subject to change over time so it would kind of just become a likely point of bugs and breaks in the future. So I had to make a decision about that and we decided that for creative variety and for making it more stable in the long term, the instant way painting was removed. But the flip side of that now is that the effects that we're adding are largely simulation based or animatable in some way. So we get like greater like motion graphics potential, something that we didn't really have before. So if you want to try this out, you can't. 
<laughs> no, you can. Um, depending on when you watch this, Biogen version 10 may or may not be available publicly. At the moment, it is only available to my patrons on the $5 tier or above. So that's the silver tier or above. The reason for that is because this is a free community project and free community projects are funded by the patrons on our Patreon wage system. Put simply, the amount of money I get from the Patreon every month gives me a set number of hours that I can spend working on free community projects. But I will go into overtime sometimes times to get a project done and that's what we've done with Biogen. However, because it's a complex project comprising geometry nodes and Python and debugging your documentation and admin and all of that jazz, it's taken a while. So the overtime is actually quite large at the moment. It's about 20 something hours and I think it comes to about 1,300 and something pounds at the time of the release candidate being ready. Given that my patron wage at the beginning of this month was about 280 something. I've got the details on a spreadsheet. I believe the estimation comes to about four point something months for release at that rate, which would mean five monthly ticks. So it will take about five months from now until this becomes publicly available. However, I reserve the right to release this version of Biogen at any time if I feel it's appropriate. So for example, if I need to just get it out the door instantly, then I will do that. But the whole point about the Patreon fund system is to protect my time, right? So I've invested a lot of time into this now that I could have put into paid products or paid work for other people, and I haven't really gotten much back for it. So if the Patreon wage increases, then the time it takes to get this public will decrease. If the Patreon wage shrinks, then the time to make this public will increase. But in between that time, this is currently available to anyone on my Patreon on the $5 tier and above. So if we go to the members lounge on my website, where all the $5 here and above can access the content. If we go to pre-releases, we can see a few things here. We had the older test version, but now we've got the full release version. And if you click on this link, it will take you to a Patreon post where you'll be able to download it if you have access. Also know that the Community Material Pack version 5 is still in pre-release at the time of recording this. So that will also be made public when the time is paid for. And while you're here, you can check out all the other stuff. We've got tons of like Blender art files and experiments. Some of these are really intense and heavy on the computer, like environments, material tests. I love the exobiology one. Some of these contain content from paid products as well that you know wouldn't otherwise be available resource packs mri visualizer etc etc to have a quick look at our documentation system you can shortcut your way here via docs.codesalt.online so if you go to knowledge base blender projects Biogen, you'll find the new documentation for that and you'll see that there are some sub pages. So there's one on creating content packs, an explanation of the debugging. This is like a self note for what the Biogen pack should look like when packaging it for people and a note about being able to sell content packs. So because the add-on is GPO license, it's available for anyone to modify, distribute, and the official content pack is CC0, which means you can do anything you want with it. However, you can make content packs. Like I said, you can convert asset libraries to content packs or vice versa. You can sell them if you want. We don't need a cut from that. The only thing I will say is if you are making paid content to distribute for Biogen users, and I've put a warning about this here, we are not responsible for supporting your package. If you are making paid content for this add-on, you are responsible for supporting that. I've made a note here, it's very blunt, but it kind of has to be for this type of thing. If you create and sell a package in such a way that it relies on us to make additional features specifically for you, then that is your fault, your failure, and your responsibility to fix. We do not work for you, we will not sell your packages for you. I have to make a note about that because I do get requests from people sometimes. I know this might sound silly, but it does happen where sometimes people think I'm the creator of like a Blender product that I have absolutely no association with just because I've mentioned it in a video. For example, a recent example of that would be the Spaceship Generator by Alberto Petronio, who's really cool, by the way, really fantastic artist. I did like a demonstrating lighting video using it, but I did get a request from someone that was like, oh, I'm not sure how to do this in the tool. Oh, this isn't working in the tool. And I'm like, I'm not the creator of that tool. I just used it. So I know what might happen in this situation is that I'm going to end up making my own paid packs for Biogen. That's fine. I understand the system. I can support that. Great. Other people may make paid packs, but the customers of those other people may come to me looking for support. I would not have been compensated for that support. It's not my responsibility. They're not my customer. They haven't paid me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. So what I recommend is if you are interested in that side of things, I would suggest just making asset libraries that you can sell, like geometry nodes based asset libraries that the user can install for the edit preferences, etc. And if you want to, you can just happen to structure them in a way that is compatible with the biogen requirements. It will still function perfectly as its own asset library, but it will also be visible by Biogen. And in that way, if there's a compatibility issue, it's still a perfectly functional product in and of itself. So just one thing to keep in mind. 
so yeah, like I said, I reserve the right to just immediately release it publicly. But for now, it's exclusive to my patrons, Silver Tier and above. And we have already started working on future content, more advanced, more premium type stuff that I think will be really cool. So if you made it this far through the video, put a biohazard type emoji in the comments so I can see if you made it this far. If you're on Windows, you can press the Windows key and the period key for an emoji keyboard. Otherwise, have a fantastic day, everyone. Stay safe and I will see you next time.